Aloha. This is Dr. Rick Bennett with Vaivaiola Ohana. I am the Kona Waterkeeper. I'm making this presentation for uh, the EPA staff that has uh, met with us on a couple of occasions over the last several months. And I thought having this presentation available to you and your staff on YouTube uh, just might be helpful. So what I'm going to do is take you on a tour of the island and illustrate a number of issues, uh, many of which I shared at our in-person meetings. So let's go down to Na'alehu, meaning the volcanic ashes. It is a very old sugarcane town with many of the homes in that upper section above the highway there in the center are connected to a gang cesspool. And many homes, even next door neighbors, are on individual cesspits. So collectively, it's one large cesspit. And from my perspective, it makes no sense to redirect just the Blackwater flows from the homes contributing to the gang cesspool, but rather to provide solutions for the entire community, especially those that are north of the highway. Two approaches can be uh, addressed. One is to use the existing sewer lines and collect the black water and process it through uh, one or two membrane bioreactor modules. The high, high quality effluent then can be discharged into a sump and we can be confident that the nutrients have been removed so its impacts on groundwater are negligible. But what seems to be making more sense in that this entire community is going to have to convert their cesspits to some other disposal mechanism is to create a network of nitrogen reducing biosystem leach fields that is to say each home will have a septic tank and then the effluent from the tank would go to these nitrogen reducing leach fields, which will remove nitrogen and phosphorus and give us a five log reduction in fecal indicator bacteria and may well get us down to 2.2 CFUs, which could make that water eligible for agricultural reuse. Now around the bottom of the island, we come up to a distinct agricultural area, the community of Pahala. Uh, many of these homes are connected to a gang cesspool. Many of these homes are like Na'alehu are on individual uh, cesspits or ces cesspools as they're called in some parts of the country. Again, Two options. One is to sewer the entire community and convey the black water to a membrane bioreactor systems and then use that treated water to irrigate the many hundreds of acres um, of macadamia nut trees. Not that they'll have sufficient water, but they'll be able to irrigate a significant proportion of, of the trees to the southwest side of the highway. Now we come around the island to the east side. This is a view of Hilo, Hilo Bay, and the very old and decaying Hilo wastewater treatment plant. Uh, just yesterday, they had yet another spill going into Puhi Bay. Uh, that's where that red line is. That red line represents a treated wastewater outflow um, that's had some difficulties with breakages. And 
In spite of many assurances, there's still concerns that this wastewater treatment plant cannot meet on a consistent basis the effluent discharge requirements as specified in the NPDES permit for this outfall. Then coming up the coast, there are several uh, small wastewater treatment plants between this location at Honoka'a and Hilo. And many of those small plants uh, are having difficulties with uh, rust decay of infrastructure and um, a number of ocean spills have occurred. This particular setup is relatively new and the six white dots there to the top of the treatment ponds represent injection wells that are injecting secondary non-disinfected nutrient rich wastewater to the groundwater uh, which is less than uh, a thousand feet to the shoreline. Now coming around the island to the Kona side up in the north there is a community called Puako and it represents a admixture of some very very uh, expensive homes uh, juxtaposed with one what we might call euphemistically coffee shacks. Most of the community is on individual cesspits that are dug into the ground and during high tide most of those cesspits will fill with seawater. Uh, the data is very clear. Uh, we are discharging human waste, nutrients, and pathogens directly into the near shore waters. Puoko needs a solution and the shallowness of groundwater may preclude the use of the nitrogen reducing biosystems. So an option here is to put a low pressure or even a vacuum sewer line along Puoko Drive and convey the sewage water to a treatment plant operated by a private entity uh, for the Monolani Resort. And in this aerial photograph, you can see uh, two treatment ponds, or actually three treatment ponds, that bring the water to secondary standards most of the time. They've had some difficulty with uh, algae overgrowth. The injection wells there uh, go down to groundwater and there's about a 1.4 mile transit in the groundwater to the shore. Um, ironically, just offshore of the homes there on Puoko Drive uh, is where we have found um, elevated nitrogen, uh, and especially nitrogen in the uh, N15 heavy isotope form, which is indicative of animal waste or human waste nitrogen. This water could be quite an asset to Manolani. They need more water for their golf course. And they're arguing for tapping into a small aquifer up Malka, uh, quite a number of miles away up in the hills. And so using solar energy, using membrane filtration, um, the secondary water can be brought up to R1 and then <clears throat> quite successfully used to irrigate the golf courses at Monolani and thereby saving a, a lot of groundwater in that relatively small aquifer. Coming down to the Kona Coast, this is Honokahau Harbor. The wastewater treatment plant there in the left is the Kalakehe Wastewater Treatment Plant. It produces a secondary effluent that is discharged into a, a sump um, that's about 50 feet in square, but the water finds a channel 
and disappears directly underground. So it has the hydrologic behavior of an injection well, even though uh, the sump is large. But the uh, sediments in the wastewater um, occlude most of the bottom of the pond, except for those channels where the water has sought its path of least resistance. Uh, the water coming into the harbor is quite cold, um, indicating it's groundwater, but it's also nutrient rich. It's nutrient rich in nitrates and phosphates. And the picture in the upper center uh, shows the harbor water at the wall where this water enters. Uh, here the water is uh, opaque green and opaque green on the surface, not all the way down to depth. The water on the surface is brackish. The water at depth is uh, ocean salinities. And so this indicates that this algae is more of a freshwater or brackish water uh, algae. The opportunity to convert the treatment plant to an R1 plant is relatively easy to do with filtration or solarization. And then the water can be used in nearby county recreation areas to support uh, soccer fields, baseball fields, and just grassy recreation areas in general. Moving down the Kona Coast, to a place called Kahalu'u Bay. It's in the center there, and there's a fringing uh, reef that creates a, a very rich uh, marine habitat, um, very, very heavily visited by tourists. It's a safe place to snorkel most days. Uh, the water's clear and calm and quite shallow. Uh, and so we see a lot of people using that. Our studies on the data that's been collected there for well over a decade clearly show groundwater flowing into the bay and that groundwater is rich in nutrients. And where those nutrients are coming from is a matter of speculation. But the likelihood is that the homes along Ali'i Drive are on cesspits. In fact, not likely they are. And we can see from this county GIS data that the sewer line ends at Queen Kalama and the Kahalu Bay is just down, down the road a mile. Uh, if you look carefully at this map, you can see a lot of faint lines that represent city streets. And unless there is a red line there, they are not served by sewer. And so all those homes have individual cesspits. The state has published data on uh, cesspit density, and that's shown in the colored maps, both for Kona and Hilo. And where they're orange, there's 40 to 100 individual cesspits per square mile. And so the, the majority of homes here are served by cesspits, not sewer. And the cost of running sewer lines in this hard, dense lava uh, is several million dollars per mile just, just to run the sewer lines. And then the connection fees have to be borne by the homeowner and the laterals from the home to the sewer line in the street can be relatively short, can be 100 feet long, and again, extremely high cost of trenching in our uh, hard lava. This shows that same phenomena uh, a little a little better. Uh, you can note the subdivision in pink is mostly served by sewer, but many of the homes there right closer to the ocean 
are not served by sewer. And then the cesspits along the shore there include uh, an injection well for a small condominium. And then the shoreline to Kahalu Bay uh, is, is not served by sewer. Once you get to the park proper, there is a sewer line that comes from the Keaho Peninsula. So most things to the south of Kahalu Bay are served by the KA wastewater treatment plant on the Keaho Peninsula. There is a subdivision up Malka of about 100 homes uh, that was not sewered. And the plan is to sewer them someday and convey that wastewater to the private treatment plant at KA. Um, that treatment plant is owned by Hawaiian Water, which is a subsidiary of California Water, a very significant entity uh, in the West. So for those homes, <clears throat> That represented by the by the red circles that are on individual septic systems, the now famous layered cake nitrogen reducing biosystem has the ability at relatively low cost over a traditional septic uh, leach field of removing nitrogen to the tune of about ninety percent, sometimes better. Uh, the sand use is high in iron, so it will bind phosphates. And then the biological filtering of the two sand layers that represent about 36 inches of fine sand uh, will eliminate fecal pathogen indicators by five logs, which is, which is very, very, very significant. So I hope this information has been helpful. It's, it's certainly, I've tried to be brief. Uh, we are sharing this information widely. And I think about the little ones when I do my work because we're doing it for them. Aloha.